the Old Testament was shrouded with mysteries. Ephesians 1.9, he says, He had made known to, unto us the mystery of his will according to the good pleasure which he hath purposed in himself. Well, the purpose of the old was a many-membered body. So the old was the body preparing a shadow of the good things to come. And the new is the fulfillment of that prepared body. And now the kingdom is where this body has to grow. And this is why we have the book of Revelation. Because Revelation is the bridge to the kingdom. Isaiah says, therefore, the anger of the Lord kindled against his people. And he stretched forth his hand against them, not only against the Jews, he stretched it against all the nations that stood up to the Jews. And he has smitten them, and the hills did tremble, and their carcasses were torn in the midst of the streets. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. Revelation is the hand of God outstretched. Now we're going to deal with this hand. Christ the head, the church, his body, and the kingdom, the dwelling prepared, the place that he came to prepare for us. He came to seek and save that which was lost, and that was the kingdom. How he did it is he dealt with the adversary, and he worked through time, and that is the removal through seals, trumpets, and vials. Now, this all started in Babylon, and it works right through to 70 AD. Not understanding these times leaves you lost in the corridors of time. So in Revelation 1, we read about the testimony of Jesus Christ. He's the Alpha, the Omega. He's the beginning, and He's the end. Please note, He does not have a beginning. He does not have an end. Time has a beginning and an end. He is the beginning and the end. He's the angel of the Lord manifested in Revelation 10. We read all about this angel, but he appeared in the Old Testament as the angel of the Lord. And we saw this revealing of this body. Ezekiel saw it when the heavens open up a man, an ox, an eagle and a lion. Four creatures in heaven preparing to come down as a man. So when Jesus came up in the clouds of heaven, it's the first time that man ever entered heaven. He was the first and the last. He was the last Adam and the first to be resurrected from the dead. He was, he is, and he is to come, the faithful witness. In the was, it was the law and the prophets that testified about Jesus. In the is, it was the Father and the Son. And the is to come is the Spirit and the Bride. Yesterday, today, and forever, he's always the same. Revelation is the removing of the first covenant to bring the testament in his blood. And the law world was the second world that has to give way to the church, a world that has no end. Again, he is the Alpha, the Omega, the first, the last, the beginning and the ending, who was, who is. and who is to come to form the church, his body. Right from the beginning, the word was in the beginning, and now the word lives in his body. The testimony of Jesus Christ worked out in time. And Revelation 1.9, I, John, who also am the brother and companion in tribulation, and the kingdom in the patience of Jesus Christ was in the isle which is called Patmos for the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. The testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit that is now sealed inside believers. Now we are in the time of the patience of the husbandman waiting for the harvest to come to full maturity. The testimony of Jesus from him, which is, which was, and which is to come. The volume of the book is all about him. 
and from the seven spirits which are before the throne. <laughs> Every week in your life is seven days, seven spirits. Everything about God is seven. Revelation 1.5, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, who was, who is, and who is to come. In the beginning was the Word, but now the Word became flesh in the fullness of time. This was the body that was being prepared in the old. And Elijah saw it when he ran back to Moses' mountain. He saw the winds that rent the rocks, and that was the statue. Babylon, Media, Persia, Greece, and Rome, the four worldly kingdoms that would destroy the earth. And these kingdoms, these trees were all chopped down and only one branch remained out of the stem of Jesse. And this is Christ. And he was now nailed to the tree to produce the spirit within the body. Now the body of Christ is sealed with the spirit. It always amazes me that he ascended and he entrusted the work unto people who didn't even understand what he was doing. But 70, 80, 40 years after he ascended, the old was totally removed. And this part of history needs to be understood. And we can't just change it as we want to, because from Babylon up to 70, 80 is actually one story. In Babylon, we have four kingdoms, Babylon, Mira, Persia, Greece, and Rome. Babylon itself was the first seal opened, and Rome was the last seal opened. The sixth seal was those people under their altar while Satan was bound, and Jesus was crucified and became the rider on the white horse. He came as the Son of Man, with a Purusha appearing to finish what he started on the cross, and those that pierced him saw it. In Revelation 10, the angel of the Lord is revealed. What a story. Because this angel kept appearing in the Old Testament. And now he's revealed. He's got a, a rainbow around his head. His legs are pillars of fire. There were seven thunders. And in his hand was a little book. The angel of the Lord was the book that is just being opened because in Revelation 5 it says, Who will open this book? No one on earth, no one in heaven. Now he's the book opened and he is now revealed. Isaiah 29, the vision is as a book that was sealed and in Revelation this book is open. But now in his right hand, there's a little book with seven thunders, no lightning. In other words, no revelation on what it was. Because he was standing here with his one foot upon the land, one foot upon the sea. Meaning no more Jews, no more Gentiles. And the kingdom and the workings of the kingdom is now sealed within believers. Who's that little book and the whole of creation is now groaning and waiting for the opening of that little book. In Revelation 10, he says, but in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. Remember, Paul was the one that opened the mysteries. So from Stephen, when Stephen was stoned and he looked up, Jesus was not sitting at the right hand, he was standing. And that was the period of standing. The kingdom is a period of growing into sitting at the table in front of their enemies, not standing and fighting. The husbandman is now waiting patiently for the kingdom is a seed, a blade, a ear, and then the full harvest. And he's waiting for us to enter that time. Israel is the one that exchanged bitter for sweet, sweet for bitter, darkness for light, light for darkness. But here in Revelation 10, he says, give me the little book. And he said to me, take it, eat it. And it shall make your belly bitter, and it shall be in your mouth sweet as honey. Taste and see. I took the little book out of the hand, and I ate it, and it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I've eaten it, my belly was bitter. Taste and see. He tastes like honey. But when you taste him, you only see the kingdom. It's not easy to serve God. It's uh, uphill all the time. 
we in a fallen creation light is working on our inside but death and darkness on the outside but if we allow this bitter to touch our minds it should not come out of our mouths the kingdom is a place where the good must come out of our mouths and the bitter must be worked out through the body all the seals are opened in revelation and all the mysteries are revealed only believers are now sealed unto the manifestation of sons in revelation 22 he says seal not the things in this book but in revelation 10 11 he said to me the testimony of jesus is now the spirit of prophecy god gave gifts as men and then he gave gifts as the holy spirit so prophets is a character given unto a man people are in the world seers and in the spirit realm they are prophets but when the prophets start prophesying darkness after the cross after light has come then the bitter is coming out of their mouths so the testimony of jesus is now the spirit of prophecy so if god reveals some calamity to a prophet it is the prophet's responsibility to bring light this is how we will bring back creation through speaking life light back into creation this book opened and the whole of creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of god until we all come to the full measure of the full stature of the Christ.